Hi everyone, today I want to talk about the books that I read or listened to in the month of September and I'll just jump straight in with the first book which is The Night Sister by Jennifer McMahon. The blurb reads, Once the thriving attraction of rural Vermont, the town motel now stands in disrepair, alive only in the memories of Amy, Piper and Piper's kid sister Margot. The three played there as girls until the day that their games uncovered something dark and twisted in the motel's past, something that ruined their friendship forever. Now adult, Piper and Margot have tried to forget what they found that fateful summer, but their lives are upended when Piper receives a panicked midnight call from Margot with news of a horrific crime for which Amy stands accused. Suddenly, Margot and Piper are forced to relive the time that they found a suitcase that once belonged to Sylvie Slater, the aunt that Amy claimed had run away to Hollywood to live out her dream of becoming Hitchcock's next blonde bombshell leading lady. As Margot and Piper investigate, a cleverly woven plot unfolds, revealing the story of Sylvie and Rose, two other sisters who lived at the motel during its 1950s heyday. Each believed the other to be something truly monstrous, but only one carries the secret that would haunt the generations to come. This book was recommended by Shelley from Shelley's Home Life, and I thought I'd give it a try. I did enjoy it, and I liked the way it was written. I felt like it was well written, it kind of wove an atmosphere. I liked that it switched between the past and the present, and there was an element of mystery that, that ran through it, but I'm not sure I loved the ending. I don't want to give any spoilers but when I got to the ending I was like really? So I would recommend it but it wasn't my favorite book from the month. The second book is The Summer Girls by Mary Alice Munro, also recommended by Shelley from Shelley's Home Life. Three granddaughters, three months, one summer house. In this enchanting trilogy set on Sullivan's Island, South Carolina, New York Times bestselling author Mary Alice Munro captures the complex relationships between Dora, Carson and Harper, three half-sisters scattered across the country, and a grandmother determined to help them rediscover their family bonds. For years, Carson Muir has drifted, never really settling, certain only that a life without the ocean is a life half-lived. Adrift and penniless in California, Carson is the first to return to Sea Breeze, wondering where things went wrong, until the sea she loves brings her a minor miracle. Her astonishing bond with a dolphin helps Carson renew her relationships with her sisters and face the haunting memories of her ill-fated father. As the rhythms of the island open her heart, Carson begins to imagine the next steps towards her future. In this heartwarming novel, three sisters discover the true treasures Sea Breeze offers as surprising truths are revealed, mistakes are forgiven, and precious connections made that will endure long beyond one summer. It's obviously the first of a trilogy and I imagine the other two books follow the other two sisters, but this just focused on one of the sisters. I did enjoy it. I could not get past the fact that this woman is called Carson. That is such a male name and it kind of... Yeah, I won't get into how I feel about boys' names being adopted for girls' names and the rapidly depleting bank of acceptable boys' names because of that. But Carson, any name that ends in son means the son of. So I just could not get past that this woman's name was Carson. Besides that, it was a good book. I liked the insight into the characters' experiences and emotions and kind of the, as their story unfolded and I would recommend it. I will probably read the other two books in the trilogy but they're not top of my list. The next book is The Last Anniversary by Leanne Moriarty. Sophie Honeywell always wondered if Thomas Gordon was the one she let get away. He was the perfect boyfriend but on the day he was to propose she broke his heart. A year later he married his travel agent while Sophie has been mortifyingly single ever since. Now Thomas is back in her life because Sophie has unexpectedly inherited his Aunt Connie's house on Scribbly Gum Island, home of the famously unsolved Munro Baby Mystery. Sophie moves onto the island and begins a new life as part of an unconventional family where it seems everyone has a secret. Grace, a beautiful young mother, is feverishly planning a shocking escape from her perfect life. Margie, a frumpy housewife, has made a pact with a stranger, while dreamy Aunt Rose wonders if maybe it's about time she started making her own decisions. As Sophie's life becomes increasingly complicated, she discovers that sometimes you have to stop waiting around and come up with your own fairy tale ending. I enjoyed this book because there were so many different characters, but not in a way that it's confusing and you don't know who's who. Just 
There were so many different stories woven together and each character had their own experience that they were going through and their own memories and their own hopes and dreams and I really liked that. I liked the thread of mystery that was running through it with the Monroe baby mystery and I would recommend it. I thought it was a good book. I love all of Leanne Moriarty's books so I expected to like this one and I wasn't disappointed. The next book is Between Sisters by Kathy Kelly. Cassie has spent her married life doing everything right, making sure her children have the perfect life, being a devoted wife to her husband and a dutiful daughter-in-law to his mother, even when her patience has been tested. Although it has left her so exhausted that wine o'clock comes a little earlier each afternoon, but she wouldn't change a thing, she's certain, until temptation comes her way. Her sister Coco runs a vintage dress shop, and sure, she's shied away from commitment over the years. It's just that Coco believes men complicate things more than necessary, and she's got enough to contend with looking after her business and her staff, who seem to rely on her more and more for relationship advice. But who is she to give advice when her own life is so simple? Watching over them is Grandmother Pearl, tucked away in her little house in Delaney Square with her chickens, busy with her poker club, and a secret lover. But something is keeping her awake at night. Was she right to do what she did all those years ago? Surely if she were right, she wouldn't be thinking about it so often now. And then there's Elsa, the polished face of daytime TV who's battled demons of her own in the past and came out on top. Now Elsa faces one final battle, but this one will require more bravery than anything that's come before. My mom recommended Kathy Kelly as an author to me. Uh, we both enjoy kind of Irish, domestic sort of stories and we both enjoy Patricia Scanlon and Melissa Hill as authors so that's why she recommended Kathy Kelly to me and I did enjoy this book. Again there's different characters with their own little stories running through it and I would recommend it. It was a good book and I have put more of Kathy Kelly's books into my to read list. The next book is 101 More Amazing Harry Potter Facts by Jack Goldstein. Noah and I were recently at an appointment which took pretty much all day. <laughs> we were waiting for I think four and a half hours before we were seen to and this is one of the things we did during that time we listened to an audiobook. So it was okay, it was a kind of a quick listen, nothing too in-depth. If you like Harry Potter you might be interested in this book, nothing earth-shattering but it was another book on my list that I read. The next book is The Apple Orchard by Susan Wiggs. Tess Delaney makes a living returning stolen treasures to their rightful owners. She loves illuminating history, filling the spaces in people's hearts with stories of their family legacies. But Tess's own history is filled with gaps. A father she never met and a mother who spent more time traveling than with her daughter. Then Dominic Rossi arrives on the doorstep of the San Francisco shop Tess hopes to buy and he tells her that the grandfather she never knew is in a coma. Tess has been named in his will to inherit half of Bella Vista, a hundred acre apple orchard in the magical Sonoma town called Archangel. The rest is willed to Isabel Johansson, a half-sister she hadn't heard of. Isabel is everything Tess isn't, all softness to Tess's hard angles, warm and nurturing where Tess is tightly wound. But against the rich landscape of Bella Vista, with Isabel and Dominic by her side, Tess begins to discover a world filled with the simple pleasures of food and family, of the warm earth beneath her bare feet, a world where family comes first and the roots of history run deep. Not much to say about this book except that I did enjoy it and I would recommend it. I liked the character development, I liked how she kind of grew and changed through the story and of course there's a bit of romance in there as well. So a good book, I would recommend it and it was the first of two. So I did also read the second one which is The Beekeeper's Ball, also by Susan Wiggs obviously. Isabel Johansson, a celebrated chef who grew up in the sleepy Sonoma town of Archangel, is transforming her childhood home into a destination cooking school, a unique place for other dreamers to come and learn the culinary arts. Bella Vista's rambling mission-style hacienda, with its working apple orchards, bountiful gardens and beehives, is the idyllic venue for Isabel's project, and the perfect place for her to forget her past. But Isabel's carefully ordered plans begin to go awry when swaggering, war-torn journalist Cormac O'Neill arrives to dig up old history. He's always been better at exposing the lives of others than showing his own closely guarded heart, but the pleasures of small-town life and the searing sensuality of Isabel's kitchen coax him into revealing a few truths of his own. 
The dreamy sweetness of summer is the perfect time of year for a grand family wedding and the enchanting beekeeper's ball, bringing emotions to a head in a story where the past and present collide to create an unexpected new future. From one of the best observers of stories of the heart, The Beekeeper's Ball is an exquisite and richly imagined novel of the secrets that keep us from finding our way, the ties that bind us to family and home, and the indelible imprint love can make on the human heart. This, like I said, was the second of the pair of books, but I enjoyed it more than the first. I think I related a little bit more to the character and I really enjoyed the scenes of domesticity and the kind of warmth and coziness that that made you feel as you read it. So I did enjoy this book and I would recommend the pair of them. Those are all of the books that I read or listened to in the month of September. As always, I welcome your recommendations. Please leave them in a comment down below. I do try to seek out books that you guys recommend to me. I'm not always able to get them from my library or from the Overdrive app, the digital library. Um, and I don't tend to buy books. So if you've recommended a book that you know I love and I haven't read it, that may be why. But yeah, I'd love to hear your suggestions and I'd love to know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.